The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Welcome to this time of worship. Let us begin by reading our vision statement. God's timeless love transforms each of us to joyously continue the ministry of Jesus Christ in our community and in our world. Let us turn to one of our inserts and sing the Easter song. Now let us turn to our hymnals, hymn number 232, and sing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
Please join me in the call to worship. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Let us turn to another of our inserts and sing, Christ Arose. Please join me in prayer. Glory to you, O God. You have won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation. You overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O Blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us turn to uh, another of our inserts and sing, He Lives.
Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead us to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace, and we despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray, but now we have returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Because we are forgiven, let us share the peace of Christ with one another.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Awesome God, we thank you for this joyous day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather and worship you. God, open up our hearts and our minds. Speak to us through your holy word. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading for today may be found on page 732 in your pew Bibles. It is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and verses 14 through 24. Tell the Lord how thankful you are, because he is kind and always merciful. Let Israel shout, God is always merciful. My power and my strength come from the Lord, and he has saved me. From the tents of God's people come shouts of victory. The Lord is powerful. With his mighty arm, the Lord wins victories. The Lord is powerful. He punished me terribly, but he did not let he did not let death lay his hands on me. Here is the gate of the Lord. Everyone who does right may enter this gate. I praise the Lord for answering my prayers and saving me. The stone that the builders tossed aside has now become the most important stone. This day belongs to the Lord. Let's celebrate and be glad today. Our gospel lesson for today comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. They ran side by side, and the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciple who got there first then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. At that time, Peter and the other disciple did not know that the scriptures said Jesus would rise to life, so the two of them went back to the other disciples. Mary Magdalene stood crying outside the tomb. She was still weeping when she stooped down and saw two angels inside. They were dressed in white and were sitting where Jesus' body had been. One was at the head and the other was at the foot. The angels asked Mary, Why are you crying? She answered, They have taken away my Lord's body. I don't know where they have put him. As soon as Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know who he was. Jesus asked her, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener and said, Sir, if you have taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get him. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni. The Aramaic word Rabboni means teacher. Jesus told her, Don't hold on to me. I have not yet gone to the Father. But tell my disciples that I am going to the one who is my Father, and my God, as well as your Father and your God. Mary Magdalene then went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She also told them what he had said to her. Christ is risen. Please say he is risen indeed. 
Let's do that one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Today is the most important day for you and me as Christians as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection brings out all kinds of feelings. On that first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene was so sad at the loss of her teacher and her friend. Most of us have experienced this same feeling as we have had to say goodbye to our own loved ones. Mary went to Jesus' tomb to say her final goodbyes, and then she was shocked to see the stone had been rolled open and the tomb was empty. Immediately, she went to tell the disciples. Peter and most likely John ran to the tomb to see for themselves. They couldn't believe what Mary was telling them. Jesus' followers had heard Jesus speak in parables, in straightforward speech about the resurrection which would follow his gruesome death. It seems like they got the part about his death, but had missed the part about his resurrection. Following his death, they scattered and were living in fear and without hope behind closed doors, wondering if they would be the next to die. They seemed to totally forget about the resurrection and didn't believe that Jesus would rise again. The disciples did not take Jesus at his word. Isn't it the same way with you and me? We don't always believe God's word. We want to believe it. But with our limitedness as humans, it can be difficult. If we truly believed in the resurrection, we wouldn't live our lives the way we do, forgetting about the fact that God has promised to take care of us. The resurrection can be complicated for some of us. It's hard to believe that something can come back to life after death, let alone a person. Does resurrection still happen today? In the dictionary, resurrection is defined as the state of one risen from the dead. Do people and things rise from the dead? Well, you all know what I'm going to say. Of course they do. It might not be in a dramatic fashion like Jesus, but life is found where death was previously. We simply need to look for it. The movie Breakthrough is a modern-day resurrection story, and it is based on a true story. In January of 2015, John Smith and his friends were messing around on an ice-covered lake. At 14 years old, John slipped through the ice and was underwater for 15 minutes with no oxygen before resuscitative efforts were even started. John was rushed to the emergency room and worked on for another 45 minutes. The doctors could not bring him back to life. They brought his parents into the ER to say goodbye. When his mother saw her son laid out on the table, dead, instead of saying goodbye, she grabbed his feet and said, Holy Spirit, please bring back my son right now. Immediately, the EKG machine began going off. In John Smith's medical record, it is written, Patient dead, mother prayed, patient came back to life. The movie goes on to tell the rest of the story of this modern day resurrection. Life from death stories are all around us. You and I need to pay attention and look for them. The resurrection amounts to God's clear signal that Jesus is the powerful son of God who has conquered death and reigns as Lord of all. At that first resurrection, Mary Magdalene was invited to come and see in the tomb. 
And her expectations were turned upside down. She expected to come into the tomb and see the corpse of her beloved leader, Jesus. Instead, she came in and saw an empty tomb. Things were different than expected. And isn't that what resurrection is? Something different than expected. One of the reasons we are all gathered here this Easter morning in this beautiful sanctuary is because we yearn for answers. Answers to our questions about the resurrection. Perhaps we are here to face our doubts about the resurrection because after all, it is difficult to believe. We want to know and be confident in the question, is it true? Is it true that God lives and gives us life? Is it true that something so extraordinary happened that morning? Is it true that God broke the laws of nature and raised Jesus from the death? These are powerful questions and are unavoidable on such a day as this. So what do we do with this? Where do we find the truth? Well, while this may seem too simple of an answer, the truth lies in our faith. Faith is believing in things that we cannot see and cannot understand. This is what the Bible teaches us. This is what we affirm every time we say the Apostles' Creed and other confessions of the Christian tradition. I believe that Jesus died for us. I believe he arose again for us. I believe that we share in the victories of Jesus when we believe in him. I believe all the loved ones we have lost on earth are safe and secure safe and secure in the full presence of God because of their belief in Jesus and Jesus' resurrection. I believe we are called to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ on our journey here on earth. We are victorious people. Jesus Christ has arisen. Because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lives, all fear is gone. Because we know Jesus holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Let us turn to our insert and sing Because He Lives. Please stand.
Now let us affirm what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. In the bulletin, you'll see that we do have several announcements. Please, please read those on your own. We do have some birthdays to honor. On the 11th, it's Jenny Jansen's birthday and Bob Brebstock's and Kate Jensen's. And we have anniversary wishes going out to Michael and Rhonda Joldersma on the 13th. Which anniversary for you two? 20, 29. Well, that's really good. I'll, I'll give you your hangers after church, okay? Does anyone have any announcements that are not in the bulletin? Or joys or concerns? If not, let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, we thank you and praise you for all the many gifts that you shower upon us each and every day. God, we have joys and we have concerns written on our hearts and our minds. At this time, we lift all of them up to you. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship with this morning's offering.
God, we thank you for the countless gifts that we have received from you. Please accept these tithes and offerings that we return to you for the glory of your kingdom. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast that Jesus Christ has prepared for you. This table does not belong to the First Presbyterian Church of Redwood Falls. This table belongs to Jesus Christ. And if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to partake of this sacrament today. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful We're so grateful that you sent your only beloved son to earth. He walked on earth's soil. He taught with authority. He did miracles. And he loved us so much that he was willing to die for us, to cover all the sins of humanity. But we know the story does not end with his death on that awful cross. For three days later, he arose, conquering death, conquering sin. And we as followers share in all of those victories. Someday we will be reunited with all those loved ones that have gone ahead of us. But God, we know that we have a lot of work to do now 
but we are here on earth. Please empower us and inspire us to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ. May people see Jesus in what we do. May people hear Jesus in what we say. We thank you, God, for all your many gifts given to us. But most of all, we are thankful for your dear Son. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words of the Apostle Paul. On the night before Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, think of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim that I shall return. The bread of heaven.
the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Jesus, Son of God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for being willing to give your all for humanity. Jesus, come into our hearts and our minds and make us bold as we go back out into this world. Help us to be a light for you to all the people that we encounter. In all these things we pray in your dear name. Amen. Please stand now to receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.